Howdy, folks. Oh, I'm barking the other door. Would you love us need coffee here? And I have my first co-host for a Way Home Review, Roxy Smith House. Hi. And we're here this evening to talk about something very special. We're not... Uh, normally, the Way Home works like this. We go to the cinema. I go to the cinema. We go to the cinema. Collectively. All of us. I take you with me to the cinema. We see a film, and then I tell you about it on the way home. But we're not at the cinema right now. We're at the theater. We saw some live theater. So tonight we're here to talk to you about Bring It On, the musical. That's right, a cheerleader musical. No, I didn't print this up. It's a real playbill type thing. No, I can't do this normally because movies don't have playbills. So that's how this is going to work if we can ever get out of this parking garage. So. Rox, yes. would you be so kind as to deliver the synopsis? The synopsis of tonight's musical is... Yes. Two cheerleaders. Two cheerleaders. Cheerleading in general. How exciting is that? Rivalry. Pathos. Emo. Right? Yes. They even had that. Um, It's basically the story of... What was her name? I don't even know. There, it's cheerleading. Campbell was the lead Campbell. character. Yes. Yes, that's right. Yes. Campbell Sue. Well, it's a great name for a lead character, it by is. the way. Yes. Mm. Um, through odd machinations of a rival cheerleader, she is sent to the lower end school of Jackson, thus leaving her beloved Truman. The, yes. Yes. Then going and starting up her own, well, using machinations of her own to start up her own cheerleading squad right crew but it's, uh, at but, Jackson yes so not giving anything further away there is your synopsis so it uh, I, I will lead off if I may and and feel free to jump in um, first of all let me say that whoever cast this thing um, they're quite good at their job. Uh, because it's a cheerleading musical, you would figure there would be lots of cheering. It, it's like uh, normally musicals, right? Acting, singing, dancing, right? It's very rare that you get uh, triple threat people who can do all three, right? This one adds a fourth dimension, which is cheering. On Because the cheering is not dancing. It's flying through the air and tumbling and almost and Cirque du Soleil level yes. type shit, right? Yes. So basically, you have to have people who can do all of that. Um, the cast is quite incredible, uh, in that they are, I, there wasn't anybody in there that I thought was, is, was weak. Um, they all had great voices, they all had great energy, and, and really, if they didn't have, if they weren't on board with, like, uh, you know, providing that energy, then the show would have sucked, because it really depends on it. Um, they, they utilized both actors in the typical theatrical sense, mm. and actual cheerleaders. Athletes and Athletes gymnasts and, and whatnot. Gymnasts. Yep. And they merged it very seamlessly. You can, at certain points, actually tell who really wasn't a gymnast mm. on the type of moves that they did. You know, simple, uh, I don't know the names, but, you know, they would do certain Flippy tumbles, stuff. Flippy stuff. Yeah. But not the real jaw dropping oh my god i hope they don't drop right moves that you know that a cheerleader that has been doing that since they were three have, has been doing mm. so so the choreography and the direction of actually merging two um worlds worlds mm. quite seamlessly yeah really really interesting and like I said, there wasn't anybody weak in there, but I would especially like to mention um, the the actresses playing Skylar, who is the who is your friendly neighborhood bitch, not the bad one. Um, you also had Bridget, uh, who is who is playing your mascot slash outcast type character, who was phenomenal. And you also had Danielle, uh, who was kind of the the leader at the uh, at the new school, and she was. Awesome. Phenomenal. Yes. Awesome. But but not to take away from the rest of the ensemble because they were all pretty fantastic. Um, so I, I think the thing is this. Um, technically as well, we'll, we'll throw out all the positives first. Technically, 
It was very impressive. They used uh, a bunch of LED screens LED that screens that moved. Yes, and utilized a really a bare uh, staging for most of it. For yes, for the most of it. Mm. But the LEDs you, were pretty much like drop cloths. Right, right. They took the place of practical sets in yeah. a lot of situations, um, which was really smart. Mm -hmm. uh, I would love to take a look at the system. Uh, as I was telling Rox, when I was doing technical theater, um, it was in, on a community level, and we didn't even have computerized light boards. You kids with your LED screens and your... Anyway, so that was all very cool. Um, I think I think we, we move into the mixed area of things, yeah. because... And, and I look at it like this. Um, the problem with doing a, a, a movie or a show or anything about, like... Um, high school type stuff is that the majority of your audience is no longer there um, so you kind of need to tap into more of a universal theme than just angst and stuff like that because right. we've all been there and it only goes so far which uh, they, they actually did merge in the second act with the hipster guy right, right. who was talking about the Grateful Dead exactly thus you know, allowing the older audience to go, I remember the Grateful Dead. Yes, yes that time point well, in our high school, it's only a blip. And, yeah. and that's it's, taking it, from and that's, the musical. That's part of the problem, too, is that you have to care about stuff. And I, while I am impressed by the athleticism of cheerleading, I could give a rat's ass about cheerleading. No. Uh, for the most part, right? Um, so... The first act is more about, less about the universal themes of, of learning and sharing and whatever else you want to do, and more about, hey, it's a cheerleader musical, which had me thinking, wow, they better get a lot of high school classes in here to see this, because otherwise nobody's going to give a rat's ass. But then suddenly, they move to this new high school, and then everything picks up, the energy takes off, um, the songs magically get better, better. And, and, and it just... It, and then it, it doesn't stop. The only time that it sort sort of uh, stalls for me um, is when we go back to the other high school because the problem is this other team. Um, it was almost like they were setting themselves up to be like the the arch foes or something yeah. like that. But while I loved the new high school, I didn't hate the old high school. No. I was instead indifferent to the old right, high school. Skyler was still funny. Yes, well, in I mean, a bitchy, bitchy, funny way. Yeah, but but it, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't her. No. The, 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 she was. She made those scenes bearable, yes. and it wasn't the cast's fault. No. It was just the material wasn't it's, supporting what they were trying to it's do. The I think. Typical of making the idea is they're making a white school. Yeah. Bottom line, it's the white school against the poorer school. The urban the, school. The urban school. So you have the typical stereotypes mm. that you see over and over which which get uh, which get discombobulated as time goes on yes. because and and they don't make a big deal out of that which is what's really smart is because we know suddenly there it suddenly it's like hey we do have an older audience. We don't have to blow up the stereotypes. Everyone knows that the stereotypes are bullshit because they're not in high school. And suddenly they're treating us like we're adults, which is what's weird. So, I mean, as, as uh, you came up with an actual solution for this, but, I, I, you know, as, as we agreed, get to Jackson, the yeah. new high school, as soon as possible so I can give a shit, yeah. right? Um, and and you were, there's a whole section that you there's pointed out. There's a whole out. section right. where it's like summer camp where they introduce Ava who is the main match you know yeah, they, de the, they develop Ava they develop with, with, without Ava. going into spoilers as to what what's happening with where Ava, they really Ava, didn't need to have this whole 15 minute section right they could have cut that and move immediately to the new school right, right. um one of the other sort of this is a phenomenon. The, the actors and the uh, athletes in this show are phenomenal. Yes. The problem of the show is the staging is relatively small, and you have this sort of three-ring circus problem that you see at circuses. They have a three-ring. They have acts going throughout the whole thing, and all of a sudden you see one person doing something phenomenal, and you're... you're Pretty, trying to take in everything and you miss it. So it's almost like a show that you almost have to re-see it again. Right. You know, just to see some sort of trick that somebody has done. Right. And, it, and it's one of the problems of staging 
I think, and if they take this, it, I mean, part of the thing is, is they want to take this on the road. Right, and probably eventually to Broadway. But. So you're going to have problems of figuring out one stage to another, right. to another. Right, well, yeah, and, and, and it, as, as we were talking about, with any show that you take on tour, then it becomes an issue of how do you map to the stage that you're on. Um, you know, un unless you're like Cirque du Soleil, you just bring your own damn stage, um, which is a really smart way to do it if you think about it. But no, I think I think the uh, the, the main thing is that it's um, uh, I enjoyed it a lot more once it got going than I thought I was going to. I mean, I, I really was in the first part of the first act, dreading the rest of the show because it was so. I was blah. worried it was going to be. I hope I get it. Yeah. I hope I get it. <laughs> Mixed with an after school special. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it it, it transcended Without that. The cutting. Yeah, what's that? Without the cutting. Yeah, uh, <laughs> without the cutting and without the scene in which all the other cheerleaders who have injured themselves are standing around in neck braces and crutches right. singing. That's that'll be in the cut scene. Anyway, um, but uh, but no, um, there's a lot of potential with the show. Yes. It does not suck. No. Um, it managed to take that that uh, worn out thing of uh, I I feel like I learned something, and and make it not boring. Um, so I, I was I was not entirely displeased. I just I just really wish they would fix the the first uh, the first part of the first act because that cast deserves better. Yes. I think yes. because they're really damn good. Yes. Um, and it's a diverse enough crowd that if when they do the changeovers mm. for you know another cast, it's it's so diverse that they can bring other people mm. in, and I think it'll be it could run for a. A for a while, for a yeah. while. Yeah. So, so, so what? What are you cup rating, rocks? What do you think? Uh, three and a half. Really, I was going for three and a half too. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's a joint three and a half cups from rocks and myself for this way home review, where we haven't actually moved because we're stuck in a parking garage. So this is a. It's still a way homer because we're trying to get home. Go figure. Yeah. So. Anyway, but that's how these work. Uh, if you enjoy these things, uh, if you're if first of all, if you're in the Atlanta area, you can do a lot worse than coming out to see Bring It On because they've got some phenomenal talent in it, uh, and it, these are the kind of folks that need to be supported because they're damn good at what they're doing. Um, so, uh, so bully for them. If you're not in the area, then uh, it'll probably be coming to you at some point. Um, and what would be hilarious is when they turn this into a movie. Oh, so you've yes. got the, you know, a Bring It On musical based on the sequels to a movie that gets turned into a musical and then gets turned back into a movie. Yes. Starring John Travolta. Starring John Travolta uh, as the voice of the dancing rhino. That's right. Yes. So, uh, so anyway, that's what we've got here. Another Way Home review in the can. Uh, I'd like to thank... My special guest, Roxy Spaz House, for joining Hi. me. I wasn't going to see this show without her because <laughs> how could you not see a cheer? How could you see a cheerleading show without Roxy Spaz House? That's what I say. V I T C O R Y, victory, 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 victory. Wait, you know what? We did learn something else too. Yes. We learned about the cheer face. Would you like to show them your cheer face? This is my cheer face. All right, that's good. And here's my cheer face. There you go. So the cheer face is from us at needcoffee.com. We'll see you soon. Hopefully we'll be home by the time it's time to tape another one of these. Otherwise, I could just watch something on my phone and review it. I don't know. We'll never get out of here. Bye. Bye.